Hello again, welcome back to the Bressond season, the final week. This one is Bresson's um, first like film that's actually was feature length film that was this has been released. Even though he's he more or less said it was representative of him, but it's this one. Le Dames de Bois de Boulogne. I probably butchered that one. But I think I did an okay job compared to some other other ones I've done in the past. You can try to see a foreign language title. This one's not bad compared to what I've done before. Um, so this one is uh, it's weird, right? First of all, he's got John Cocteau as a writer on it. It's based on a. Right, I'm just trying to get this here. Based on a tale by Diderot. So it's an old tale I think we read about 200 years before it was made. And this was, um, this was made in 1945 in France as a war had just ended. And it was obvious they were trying to make films to get back into the market, get, back, get friends back into the film market and away from collaborators so Bresson was, in, was obviously in the resistance so he's, he's making a film. But they're trying to make it romantic in French and you know even though it's a dark subject matter everything's shot in a romantic way. It's shot really professionally, there's lots of sets which quickly get shocked by Bresson, he did not like sets. So the, these sets look weirdly shot, like he's not comfortable with them. And it's kind of shot as if it's a, it's trying to ape, like, American romantic women's weepies. And it's so normal as a story. So you can see why Bresson feels kind of distant from it. So you have moments of women crying and things, and it just, and there's a musical score, and it just feels so wrong for if you're a Bresson fan. This one's just not... This one just feels like it's it's a weird move. It's just a weird film. It's almost like Bresson making a movie. It's like he tried to do a movie, but he's Bresson, so he can't quite do it. So it's this weird kind of hit, like two kind of filmmaking hit against each other. I guess he's kind of had to make this film to realise what it wasn't. But that means that this film is very hard to to start with because you're expecting something else. And it doesn't reveal his Bressonian roots till later. And it's also the problem of it, is it feels more simplistic than what Bresson was going to do with Direct Country Priest or Pickpocket or any of these films, you know, or A Man Escaped. Any of these 50s films were much more complicated than this one. And it feels like he's been hemmed in by the style of it, so he can't quite make it as brutal as it needs to be. And the end feels like a bit of a cop out compared to what I was expecting, especially from Bresson, because the end doesn't quite feel Bressonian. It feels like it's like if we made this story later, it would have a different ending, <laughs> you know, because um, it's too romantic. But the basic tale is a woman has, has an on off relationship with this man. Who she's obviously in love with, but she's vain and cruel and she likes her freedom and so does he. So since she kind of dumps him to make her him fall in love with her again a bit more and be a bit more needy towards her, but it goes backfires because she, he says, oh that's good because I was feeling the same way, so he gets an easy out from this. So she's not very happy with him. So she says to keep plan revenge. She, because she, these are both high society people, she knows someone who fell from society like five years ago that he didn't know. And now one of them's working in a burlesque dance, a burlesque dancer. Doing that to have found enough money to live on to feed her and her mother. So um, this woman decides to go visit them, tell them that act as if she didn't know where they were, say this is horrible, you shouldn't be living this way and gets on back on her feet and says you just have to avoid all your old friends and ignore this past five years as if it did not happen and you'll eventually get out of this problem don't worry about it, it just takes time act as if she's been very kind but what she's doing, she's setting this guy onto the dancer who's a 
a lot smarter than she looks. Like, uh, of course she's a dancer, people uh, assume she, she's not very bright, but it turns out she is very bright. She can tell that this woman's setting her up in some way. She doesn't know how, and the uh, manipulator keeps on having to find ways to to lower her praise defences because the woman is smart enough to know that something's not quite right. Of course the guy falls for everything, he's just going full into this disastrous situation and not knowing you can set up because the whole point of the f f story really is that she wants to have to marry this burlesque dancer and then tell him on his wedding day you married her because it's a high society this is like the worst thing that ever happened to him it's quite a brutal revenge and the way it plays out the way she keeps on manipulating them and the way she keeps on using the defence of this woman against her and Faith seems to keep on stopping the woman from telling the guy, she's scared of telling the guy of her past. And it becomes this kind of, it's this melodrama, but it's also a really dark revenge story. And it's all about the rules of society, how they can oppress people and how you, you can't escape your past. In the society, they always know what you've done in the past. You can't rise up above a mistake. Kind of like modern life. And everything's always stored and everything's remembered and it's all about that and it's all about those that oppressive feelings and how people can manipulate them and be cruel about them and how society has certain things you should not go against otherwise you're spheres a scumbag and it's just about the manipulation of all this the problem with the film is it's not this manipulation within the confines of a romantic drama and wrestling's just not good at that and you just do feel the tension, he did does not he do not feel like he wants to be there a lot of the time. In certain scenes it's like someone get me out of here. Just, um there's lots of like camera movements which feel kind of much more Max Wolfels than rather than Bress on. And it's stuff that you would never do again and it's just like people going downstairs and lifts going downstairs and they'll try to race down to, for the lift gets there and things and it just feels just not him. Even though a lot of the time it's been done in a kind of manipulative way as someone's getting set up. So there's always some tension to it, but it still doesn't feel him. And it feels like there's the scenes where he's with the he's with the dancer and she's trying to work out what's going wrong, what's going on. Feels much more like a on film, feels much more acute to him and his films, but still shot in a more romantic, sympathetic, sentimental way. So it kinda of gets in the way sometimes. In the end, just feels like cop out. Feels like, what the hell are you doing? This ending, <laughs> this ending is not good. It's just too sentimental. It's just, but despite all that, the film's still very good. Because Bresson's such a good director, and Cocteau does the dialogue and the work work together. The acting's good. The style's wonderful. Everything really works, but it just feels like the script and the style going in different directions. It's like the producers are saying you have to do it this way and Bresson's fighting against it. But there's, there's, there's enough professionalism so that there's never a kind of disconnect that makes the film more watchable or anything. It just feels there's always a tension within the film that's always interesting but if you know where Bresson's going to go next that feels kind of... this film feels very confusing. But it's still definitely worth watching. It's just like it's not a film to watch if you want pure breasts on. It's a film to see and say, okay, this is this is the start of him. This is where he, he began. But it doesn't feel like it's where he was, his heart really was. So it is an interesting film, it is worth watching, but it is a weird experience. Because it, it is, yeah, I feel like the director not quite been in his element. In this case, because he's such a professional, it works, but it doesn't work the way his later films have worked, where he was going gangbuster still into his own way of doing things, his own style, his own focus. Like, he was much sparer when he was, as went on, and focused on what was important. In this film, you feel there's scenes that aren't are there for the sake of plot, but they're not really. They don't really need to be there. And it's. It really lacks a the strip down, even the plot levels, is press on into style. He was very good at peering stuff away you don't need and getting to the point all the time. And this one you feel that you're 
meandering towards the point and it's like it's almost like this is a 50 minute film that's almost an hour and a half long so there's not enough complications here for what we'd best want to do later on you feel that there's lots of stuff added in that could be a that is a scene but could be a line in a later Bresson film it's that kind of feeling of just padding and it's not quite really working as well as it could but still it's a wonderful film despite all its flaws but it is definitely the most flawed Bresson film but definitely go see it if you can. BFI has a release of it which is basically just a film and a few biographies that's it there's nothing really there but it's a nice print so you'll get to see a good version of the film so if you want to see it I would definitely say try the BFI version it is good and you probably get it quite cheap now so it is definitely worth trying but um, it's not pure press on either though it's something else well, I hope you enjoyed that I'll be back with the final press on film that I haven't covered tomorrow which obviously is large on